Hi guys, it's Nunu. I'm here in home and I'm taking us into modules uh, to look at what is due this weekend in our assignment. So let me scroll down to week eight. And I'm looking here at the online essay discussion quiz two, chapter five of this little book and 2017 fortune article, low income and minority students continue to lag in high school graduation rates, and two pro and con 2017-18 AB705 articles, which is 60 points. OK, let me click on this and go over this assignment with you because there's a little bit of confusion. So I'm scrolling down. I see our wonderful visual of the graduation cap with the moving tassel. So the overview, post by Saturday, post your work by Saturday, and critique two peers postings by Sunday. Directions, OK? So number your work, one, two, and three, and four, as appropriate. And the first um, part of your work is number one. The major racial groups in the US are black, white, Asian, and Hispanic. Create a list in which you identify the percentage and number of people in each major racial group in the US who live in poverty. So this is what I want to see as in this example. For example, number one, Hispanic, 50% or 225,000 people. I want the percentage and I want the number. Asian, 10% or 220,000 people. The same for black and the same for white. And let me tell you that these statistics here are not accurate. These are just examples. Now, how would you find the statistics? Well. I say here, to find these statistics, click on the links below. Click here for an easily understandable breakdown of US Census Bureau statistics about who lives below the poverty line provided by Federal Safety Net, which is a secondary source, OK? And then I ask you to fact check the Federal Safety Net statistics by clicking here and here to access poverty statistics from the US Census Bureau the primary source that Federal Safety Net uses. So Federal Safety Net is a secondary source, and it is using the US Census Bureau, the primary source, uh, for its facts. So let's go up and let's click here for Federal Safety Net. And we see Federal Safety Net in the link, and we see US poverty statistics. Uh, and I'm going to scroll down this page. They're all listed here, black, Asian, Hispanic, and you'll find white in here too. So you need to read through this and look at it, OK? So I'm going to go out of this link, back into our direction. So I clicked on this link here. That's where I found it. Now you need to fact check all the statistics um, by clicking here, which is the United States Census Bureau. And you'll need to look through this information here and read about it, our population estimate and um, all of this information here, OK? You need to know how many people are estimated as of July 1st, 2017 in our population and how many of them live in poverty. So we have the total number of people here, OK? Um, we also have the total numbers of the races, white alone, American Indian, Asian, uh, all of this, um, these races. So you'll need to check these and just get the overall um, uh, percentage of the population, the different racial groups are in this link. OK, so I'm going back to our directions. And now I'm going to click on the second link, which is right here uh, for the US Census Bureau. And it's coming up. And this is a PDF. And you'll need to read through this. Uh, it's going to require some research on your part. So you're going to need to look at the table of contents right here uh, and read about poverty in the United States. Now, it's somewhere in here. And if you look at this table of contents and you cruise through this PDF, this document from the US Census Bureau, you will be able to find the information you need, but you're going to have to search for it just like I would. 
So you'll read through the table of contents and um, you'll find this information in here. So it's all here, income and poverty in the United States 2016. This is what our current uh, statistics are based on. So you'll need to look through this document. It's going to take some time for you, but that's okay. Take the time to study it. Grit, remember? Okay, so I'm going back to the directions. So these are where you would find the poverty statistics. And then that was your first task. Let me remind you. So this was number one, what I wanted you to do. Find out the uh, percentage and the hard count, the number of actual people who live in poverty of these four major racial groups. Then you have another task. And it's number two, in order to understand poverty statistics, do you think that a person needs to be aware of both kinds of statistics, percentages, and actual numbers? Why or not? Why not? And I want you to provide a detailed answer. Uh, don't say yes or no. Um, tell me why. Okay, so this is just a question for you to answer. Okay, after number one and two, you have number three. So using your reading methodology developed in Chapter 5 of this little book, Explain in 750 words, three pages, what the three articles listed below are contending, what they're claiming, arguing, they're making contentions, and agree or disagree with their contentions. I want you to use the information you gained from your research in number one above to inform your argument. So what is the information you gained in number one? Well, you gained information if you do this assignment correctly, you work on it, you know the percentage and the number of people of all the major racial groups living in poverty. Okay, so you're going to use this information to inform your discussion, the three pages you're going to write, 750 words, about these articles. So you have three articles, the 2017 Fortune article, um, you have another 2018 article, and a 2017 article. So you just need to click on the links and you need to read the articles. I'm clicking on this link. And the article comes up, low income, whoops, low income, oops, it's going down. Let me pull it back up. Low income and minority students continue to lag in high school graduation rates. Okay, I want you to read through this article thoroughly. Okay, let me just click off of this. So it's all this information here. You want to go ahead and you want to read it and note it. And remember, you can use this information in your research paper. Okay, so. This will take time, and you need to take time to read it. You also have a 2018 article, a commentary, how California's new law on remedial classes can help more college students graduate by Eric Danson, January 9, 2018. You need to find out um, what the new law is, so you would click on this article. And here it is right here. You need to read it. So this is pro, the new law. Uh, so find out what the new law is. Okay, I'm going back to our directions. You also have a 2017 article, and here's actually the name of the new law, AB705. This is affecting you now. Let me scroll down a little bit so I can see it. And this is against the new law. So this one, number two, is for the new law. This one is against it, and you'll need to read on it. Okay. I'm clicking on this link to show you it works. So AB705 guarantees under unprepared community college students fail so you'll need to read it and think about it all right so it's all right here now i'm going back to the directions and number four you have to comment on two of your peers postings constructively let's see what constructively means it means constructive criticism is a process of offering valid and well-reasoned opinions about the work of others, usually involving both positive, positive and negative comments in a friendly manner rather than an oppositional one. So you want to be friendly and you want to offer constructive criticism about others' uh, work, their essays, and their, um, their research about the statistics. And you want to praise what's good, okay, so positive. And you want to tell them truthfully uh, what doesn't work, but in a friendly manner. Okay, friendly rather than oppositional. You're not arguing. Okay, I'm going back to this. So you're going to comment on two of your peers' postings constructively, critiquing their thoughts, feelings, and ideas regarding uh, the text. 
uh, so what they read up here. And you're going to write at least 150 words, a half page, in each critique of a peer's work. And be sure to put your peer's first and last name above the critique, okay? Um, so put the first and last name. And you can click here for an example of a meaningful critique. I'm clicking on it. I see the name of a pair, Danny Ireland. You might want to read through uh, this kind of critique, which is what I want to see, okay? And in this critique, the writer shows um, that the writer has read Danny's work, okay? And has um, commentary about it that's meaningful. So you need to do this. Okay, I'm going to use this back arrow to go back to the directions right here. So this is all that you need to do um, in here. And if you have any questions, I'm over here in Inbox. You can ask me a question. And um, I usually answer very rapidly. Sometimes on the weekend, um, I'm a little bit uh, busy with other things. So it may take me a little while to get back to you. But generally, I'm, I'm pretty rapid. OK, so that concludes. Um, my discussion of essay discussion quiz two and what you need to do. All right. Have a great weekend.